Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. So my next interview is with Charles Officer. He's a filmmaker, he's a writer, he's a Canadian who is releasing a film uh, this coming Friday. That's March 8th at Hot Docs here in Toronto, and they are setting out on their uh, Canadian tour. Uh, it's, it's, it's a film called Invisible Essence. It's about uh, a life. It's about this life. It's about fear and fascination and about beauty and about art and how we interact with it. But really what it's, uh, the central part of the story is about uh, St. Exupery, the the author, the aviator, uh, this artist who lived a very interesting life, but 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 was quite a prolific writer. Uh, most of us know him uh, uh, through the book, The Little Prince. And I would imagine most of us have, have read the book at some point in our life, but uh, I'm wondering when was the last time we actually revisited it? And and I've done that. I've taken it off the shelf again. I'm going to be reading it with my kids again soon. And uh, what a what a wonderful film! You're going to want to get to see the film. It also uh, it will be existing on uh, CBC. Uh, you can get to it through the CBC uh, website and the documentary channel there too. But we talk about uh, existentialism. We talk about joy and life and beauty and wonder and about uh, this thing we call the creative journey. We talk about the personal to the universal and this whole idea of returning to our childhood and and and, and, and crossing cultures. And, and what is it that children find so fascinating about being children? And why as adults are we, we so uncomfortable with this idea of, of, of uncertainty and, and doubt? We talk about the heart and why, you know, as Pascal said, said, why does the heart have reasons that the head cannot know? It, um, we talk about why this is a timely film and 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 and, and how it connects to the world uh, that's unfolding uh, for us each and every day. Uh, and and it's it's a beautiful film. Uh, love and and trust and and tolerance. We talk about relationships and and others. We we cover a whole lot of ground. And and Charles and I uh, laugh a little bit about the fact that there's just no way to to actually go really deep in in a you know in a short podcast like interview. So I am looking forward to to part two. So don't touch the dial. Uh, wait for it. Uh, interview coming up um, in the near few in the next few seconds with Charles Officer about his new film Invisible Essence. If you'd like to get behind the work that I'm doing and support us financially, you can do that on patreon.com if you can't do that, uh, and I totally uh, get that, totally understand, please leave a, a review on Spotify or on iTunes or somewhere out there on the internet and, and say uh, why, why you're enjoying Face to Face and, and how you're engaging with it. Share it with your friends. And also, if you want to um, find out more about what I'm doing, davidpecklive.com, you can do that uh, there as well with, my, you know, with respect to my speaking and my writing and so on. And then uh, don't forget, I also exist on rabble.ca and a whole host of other writers there and thinkers and podcasters that you might want to dive into. So don't touch the dial. Coming right up, Charles Officer talking about who's his new film, Invisible Essence. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We are joined by a very special guest here with us today, Charles Officer. He is a filmmaker. Uh, he's here with us today to talk about his new film, Invisible Essence. And uh, wow, I, I think we're going to be talking a, a, about a whole lot more than just the film. Charles, <laughs> thanks for your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, David. Thank you. So why don't we at least give uh, our, our audience and, and those listening in a little bit of a quick overview about the film and, and, and where it's going to be playing. Let's get that uh, out on the table right out of the gate and, and, and what your hopes are for it. And then I, I have a really specific question about Asteroid B612. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Um, yeah, so Invisible Essence, Little Print, it's a feature-length documentary that I... Uh, had the pleasure and honor to to dig into the story of the fabled uh, infamous uh world-renowned book the little prince um so it's uh we're just gearing up for our theatrical release beginning here in canada uh starting in toronto on march 8th at uh, bluer hot doc cinema 
and then uh, doing limited re- release across cities uh, in this country, and we're excited about that. Um, uh, yeah, so this 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 documentary, it's like it's funny even just discussing like a documentary about a book and and uh, reeling back to the the whole genesis of it. It's like, well, what do you do? How do you approach making a film about a book if you're not adapting it in this way or that right. way? And um, so this film um, really kind of focuses on the actual book chapter by chapter while trying to draw connections towards the the human being, the man, mm. the author who created the book and how his life experiences touched on what we were actually uh, reading in this sort of magic realistic interpretation. Um, and, uh, and so it's about the artist, the, the art that's created um, and also kind of drawing a through line that was, uh, that really spawned off of the idea of the, the infamous line, what is a, you know, um, what is essential is invisible to the eye. And, and so there's a through line of a, our contemporary little prince, a seven year old Pakistani Canadian boy who's blind, who, who is introduced to the book through a braille version. Right. Of, of the, Which uh, is such a beautiful book. intro. Such a beautiful intro. So, so it's like, it's all these scenes are kind of layered in there because, you know, essentially, it's, it is a magic, realistic, sort of existential uh, book that people believe. They believe that it's a children's book, but I think it's, it's, uh, it's an adult. It's an it's adult children's book, I think, in, in many ways. So, Charles, tell me, I have so many places to go. And I, I just so, uh, so you know, we're not, we're not going to have enough time for this interview today. Yeah, I, I can absolutely. T- I, I can tell <laughs> we are going to run out. I think we should already book part two, three, and four. Um, maybe we need <laughs> right. to make a documentary just about this interview alone. How's that? Could we, I know, right? could, could we get funding for oh, that, Charles? Wow. We probably could. I mean, we can do that. We could do like a series of just breaking it down. I mean, hey, man, you can discuss a single chapter of this book forever oh, alone. You know, it's crazy. So, it's it's absolutely wild, crazy talk. And I, I I wanted to share with you that I pulled my copy off of the shelf, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure yeah. when uh, when it, and the 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 cover the the, the the binding is cracked on it. I've I've read it and opened it wow. so many times and. And, and, and out, and out falls this little piece of note paper and I've got notes written on it with page numbers about the loss of wonder and the sheep inside the crate and asteroid uh. 6 12 and numbers and grownups and imagination and, and, and the four sunsets, you know, um, yeah. there's just so much going on here. And, and, and I just flipped through it while you were chatting. It's 83 pages full of right. these beautiful illustrations translated into, I think, as you say, in the film over 200 languages what's yes. going on with this book i know it's 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 an amazing little phenomenon and and i think that that was also part of the mystery of like you know um trying to reach out to individuals who've you know been really moved by the book or the book has inspired them to, it, it's also this book has inspired so many different types of creations from records right. and music to ballets to films to the like so it's it's um it's 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 this sort of little piece of art that that inspires in so many different ways and and that was part of the journey of making the film not that you know everyone has such their own personal uh relationship with it right although it seems to be this this universal connection that we're finding as well mm. um individuals who are are seeking things, um, individuals who've experienced death, individuals who are creative and individuals who are, um, you know, sort of have imagination or want to reconnect with their imagination or it's, it's a phenomenon. And next to the Bible, it's like, you know, it's like the most, (laughs) like it's, 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 it's a bizarre phenomenon that, that I don't even think, I don't think you can encapsulate it in, in a film, but it's almost like what he's talking about, the author's talking about, it's, it's invisible mm-hmm. and it's a feeling and it's back to your heart and it's, and it's, and it's what we feel that draws connections, you know, really in its core and, and bring it back to some sort of human connection um, is, is in mortality and immortality. It's just like, okay, you know, it's bringing the book somehow encapsulates these 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 uh, you know these core simplistic things about us as human beings 
and 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 yet still it reaches it crosses all these cultures and genders and it's, it's, and religions and it's quite, and it's, it's quite it's remarkable quite unique I, well i love the way that 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 thread i mean there's just so many uh, connecting points for me and there's so many it's the kind of thing the film that will you know it kind of resonates with you and you you over the next couple of days i'm going to have some of those aha moments but i love how how the braille and the touch and the feel and the senses and the the lack of vision and yet this is really about something that's inside it's a, it's a it, it's just there's <laughs> there's just so much going on there it's really remarkable and not only have I hoped we piqued our interest of our listeners to see the film uh, but but also you know to 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 read the to to hopefully reread the book with a new set yes. of eyes and it, would you say that's Absolutely. kind of what you were hoping with the film, I mean, obviously you've you've got a lot going on in this film. And by the way, congratulations! It's it's a beautiful piece. Uh, I, I oh, thank hope, you. I so hope much. I hope everyone sees it. It's it really is quite remarkable. It's a it's a mini course in modern existentialism. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. That's so it, true. Well, and it's and it's done in a really fun and interesting way. And and we we we, we learn about Exupery. Uh, I mean, stuff that we we had no no idea, or I had no idea about him. And and it makes it all yeah. the more interesting and fascinating. You think about how does. How does a story like this even begin, you know? Um, right. So, so Charles, how, how about you? What was your introduction to, to The Little Prince? Do you, do you have a stark sort of first yeah. me memory of that? Yeah, you know, when I was uh, um, in art school, I was at OCAD. And, mm. and you know, uh, I was also taking a bit of a theater course there and, and sort of things. But, it, you know, I was... Uh, someone handed me this book to kind of, you know, take a look at. And, and, uh, I was intrigued by the drawings and, and I'd heard about it obviously. And, um, but, but then I read it and, and, and I guess I was also in that sort of creative journey, beginning of this creative journey for myself. Right. And, and, uh, I'll be honest, there were things about this book that I, that I didn't quite, you know, understand fully, but I felt something very strong, <laughs> I like it. Yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and so, and, and, and the fascinating thing is just, you know, revisiting over a few years and, you know, as you, as you get a little older and, and things start to just, take on different forms for you sure. as your life experience grows and then then really delving into this film it wasn't it wasn't really until doing that that i was like you know what what do i know about saint exupery like i knew that he you know read he wrote some pretty amazing books and you know and i didn't really delve so far into like wind sand and stars and all these other books that he was actually claimed incredible author already you know renowned um and and then and then it really t and this is the only book that I actually had associated with right. this author who, enough, who's done yeah. so many incredible things. I had no idea about him being this this incredible um, aviator at the at the at the at the, <laughs> the the beginnings of aviation. Like what kind of human being even does that, and what kind of brain and and what kind of person has the sort of compartmentalized brain that they can do be this artist and writer and author and story creator imagination and then operate an, an uh, a plane uh, an aircraft that takes such technical and, and and precision and 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 i think uh bravery in a sure. different way that you know at that particular time like how does how does this one person exist in this world and and i think that you know uh the little prince is 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 this sort of his his accumulative experiences of the world and how he sees it and mm -hmm. and and through the eyes of of this sort of you know um, fabled sort of magical unrealistic sort of character that appears in the desert you know and I I think it's it's such an amazing level of imagination which I love what you know um, Adam Gopnik says in the film he says that you know Kitty Subaru is talking about you know, the failure right. of imagination in the adult world. Yes. Yeah. And as we get older and this sort of thing, how we become so safe and, and this, and, and it's about the numbers and it's about this. And it's, and that imagination is kind of continuously getting squeezed out of us as we, you know, from, as we grow older, when we should be kind of opening up and, and is there our imaginations that actually transform the world you know, it's like, you know, Apple, like genius, like Einstein, all these ads, it's like, imagine it's it, these, these, these ads for these corporations are telling us to imagine, but they're like, you know, we're, you know, people are comfortable with someone else doing the imagining for them and them getting on with this. 
But um, what kind of world would it be, you know, if we were really kind of exercising our levels of imagination? If we, if we, care, if, if we cared less about numbers. Mm hmm. Right. I, um, and that becomes a priority. And that know, becomes a priority. Society. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and obviously he, he, he would have believed in numbers and he saw their importance. And, and, and of course, we need them in quantification and all of that. But, Absolutely. But, but what I love about the, the story, I need to tell you this. So, so I, I wasn't sure if I was going to go down this path, but about uh, 12, 13 years ago, I was doing some postgraduate work in international development, uh, probably longer right. than that, actually. And I had a professor who, who was, um, you know, he loved his PowerPoint slides. Let's put it that way. And <laughs> they were loaded with information. And no kidding, right. his classes would have 60 to 75 slides, these, these, these lectures. And I remember wow. uh, it was a course in project proposal writing. And I remember the first class or second class, and, and I, we were at break. And I walked up to him and I said, I'm done. I, I re I'm really sorry, but I don't think I can do your course. Uh, it's wow. just, it's too quantifiable. It's too this, it's too that. It's too analytic, basically, I guess is what yeah. I was saying. I'm more schooled in, 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 in existential philosophy and phenomenology and so on. Anyway, he goes over. Right, he, right. He doesn't say a word, Charles. He goes over, no kidding, this is the truth. He goes over to his briefcase. He pulls out a copy of The Little Prince. Huh. He, he turns to page 10 and he points to it and he said, I need you to read two or three paragraphs here. And he And he makes me read the piece where where um, um, the prince is talking about houses and how grown-ups only want to talk about a house because it costs mm -hmm. a certain amount of money. Yeah, and, and then yes. uh, and then the last line is if, but of course, those of us who understand life couldn't care less about numbers. And then That's and then Exuperi's right. line: children children need to be very understanding of grown-ups, um, which is just such a beautiful line. But that was right? Otto, this 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 professor, this teacher, Otto Farkas, who who. Who clearly had the that's, wisdom that's and the ability right. to see through his own presentations. Interesting. And it was like he was just, he was ready for me. <laughs> it was just. That's amazing. Isn't that like, incredible? It's necessary. It doesn't really matter, but this is actually necessary to, to a certain degree, but don't put, like, it's pretty fantastic. It's pretty fantastic. But, and but I think, it, yeah, it put, kind of puts it into perspective in some respects. Right. But as to an earlier a question you asked earlier, it was like, absolutely, it's like the film can only encapsulate so much, but and there's so many lines and so many, so many phrases and, and, and little messages and anecdotes that, that I want people to go back to the book. Right. And, and, and there's no way that I, I would want to, you know, so it's just hopefully that there's just some new perspectives about maybe certain chapters or certain things that you may have not thought of or that you have thought of or you could find that you agreed with or you, it's just a different perspective hope you find something in there or even where it came from like right, right. you know what part of this artist like what did they experience and how did that translate into this message to all of us you know um and so but absolutely revisiting the book even you met, just mentioning those lines or i'm like wow what an incredible sort of piece. I'm like, yeah, which was also hard thing of well, what lines do you want to land and what right, lines can, right, can right. you leave out? And, um, cause everybody will have these sort of little pieces, Sure, sure. but if you haven't read the book, then you can discover it on your own and, and develop your own, you know, set of, of characters and things that, that speak to you. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah. So you, you've got quite a list of, of people that appear in the film, uh, some, some, mm -hmm. some fil filmmakers and artists and poets, and, and it's really quite remarkable. Did, did, did most people just say, yes, I'd love to be a part of this project mm -hmm. just because of their own kind of admiration and love and, and memories of, of their experience of the little prince? Absolutely. I think, you know, we were very lucky that it was really more about scheduling right. and, 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 and the logistics rather than, oh, geez, no, I would, I definitely don't want to be a part of this project. Right. I mean, so, some individuals, you know, down the list that we, you know, sort of a very, very large list and then just constant, constantly trying to whittle it down before you're approaching people. Then some people, they do line up and then they do fall away. Then you have to kind of find someone else. And so there, it's a bit of a juggling act throughout, but the, the, the core of individuals that we reached out to pretty much, it, they want to be a part of the film. And then it was just us working out right. how to, how to make it work. Um, and trusting us. And I'll never forget this meeting. I had with, the first meeting I had with Stacey Schiff, who I admire as just a writer, right, right. you know, and, the, and, and as well as 
just, you know, her attachment to the, you know, Sibri and the little prince, but she's an amazing person. I had to meet with her in New York and I remember I had to travel all the way from Brooklyn to like downtown. And it just, I mean, already traffic was pretty crazy, but it was duly crazy this particular day. And, and I was about a half hour late and I was sweating and I was nervous and I was terrified and first impression. I mean, we've been in touch, but not first, you know, meeting. And she was just cool as a cucumber and so <laughs> calm and told me to just relax. And right. she understands and just, and I'm still, even while she, she said it like five times, I'm still like panicking and apologizing. And, and uh, she really kind of got the, the, the Canadian treatment of stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really funny. She was wait, with hey, Charles, way to play, way to play into the stereotype. I love it. I know, right? Oh my gosh, it became embarrassing, but she was so cool and so open That's and great. and we met I met with her a year before we actually, you know, started filming. So it was really great like, you know, we started pulling people in and letting them know really really ahead of time. Um, but yeah, we're we're fortunate. We're really fortunate to have the individuals that we that we're lucky to the get. The fact the fact that it's been translated into two hundred languages. I, I I was going to do some research and, and find out how many copies it sold, but I'm sure it's in the millions. And um, mm -hmm. it's quite a remarkable, as you said, you said earlier, a phenomenon. Do you do you so so? There's a line in the film around when we're talking a little bit about his upbringing and you 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 know, the death of his father and then his brother dies at a young age too. It sounds like, you know, Exupery led a fairly dark, melancholic, kind of almost tortured existence to some degree. Um, mm. But the line that comes out was this, uh, I think it was a per permanent quest to return to his childhood. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that's why this, res is that one of the reasons why? I mean, it's a great book. It's a great story. It's wonderful. There's all kinds of things we could draw from there, I suppose, on the surface. But do you, is that maybe what's resonating with people that we all have this desire to kind of get back I there? Think you know? So I think he tapped into that. I think he, he really felt it. And, you know, artists and he worked from, an, I think um, he was sensitive to the world and worked from an emotional place. And I think that, that, that is essentially, I think there's that, you know, that's that, that also that idiom or saying about, you know, once a man, twice a child. Mm. And, and you, you know, you begin there, you return to childhood and there's, there's always this sort of yearning to return to this sort of place where things are a little, you know, you, I guess you learn to, you appreciate your childhood and what it meant uh, when you have right. gone through the, right. the gamut of, right. of adulthood and into like the real world, quote unquote. And you're like, man, geez, if I can only, and I think that he, he got that. Mm. And I, and, and, and and I think that energy is 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 captured and, and just kind of remains an immortal thing within this this this, this book. Um, so yeah, I, I I I think that's what you know you know great artists actually they accomplish. You know, that's why I think how things become timeless or classic. It's it's you know whether it's music or it's film or it's a novel or um, you know it's 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 somehow captured that mm. that 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 i don't know that essence that thing that that makes it timeless and um and that artist left that part of their feeling what they understood that we all feel but they were able to harness it you know and leave it in that thing and 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 now we have it now we have it well there and there's there's some there's something about being a kid and it comes out in the film i think it's with florence uh, rickler when, when she talks about you know children uh, I love the phrase, by the way, for the children expose themselves easily and well. Yeah. And we, we, don't, we yeah. don't, we don't really do that. And then I think you interview a French philosopher and, and uh, who, who comments about, you know, as adults, we, we're not, we're not, we're not happy with uncertainty. We don't like doubt. And yet children, no. you know, children are okay with it. Right. On, They're okay with yeah. it. We're okay with like the day to day and discovering that, you know, something is hot when you touch it and, <laughs> and, and even having to double check a few times to be, is this really real? Like, you know, and then we just want to be told that that is it. And we, and we, and we check, we check less ourselves, mm. you know, as we get older, it's like you're told that this is this and you take it for, Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's already been worked out. That's it. And less investigating and, and that sort of thing of, of, of what you're feeling and, and, and the amazing thing about these sort of senses that we apparently have, but it's like, you know, our eyes and what we see and how we, we can all see one thing, but have this different interpretation of it. And then it, it's just kind of like how, 
you know, is that happening, you know, especially in our time and our world when we can see such things happening and, and still be in denial about something where this kid is just like, no, that's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. Right. <laughs> what are we trying to cover up? So, yeah, but kind of like peel those layers back. And it's like, you know, if you're going to connect with your heart, then you can't be like covering things up. Like you can't, it's, it won't work like that. So what, what, what you, you just brought up, you just brought up the heart. Um, tell, tell me a little bit more about that. And I've, I've got a quote cued here from the book that I, that I'd love to read at, at some point, but is, is that the invisible essence for you? You know, that, that, yeah. that it, the heart, the heart is sort of, you know, what is, what did Pascal say? The heart has its reasons that the head cannot know. Absolutely. Right. And I think connected uh, quote unquote, our five known senses. Like we have, you know, um, and then we talk about the sixth sense, or we talk about this other. We have all these other really, really detailed senses. But where's the heart in the mix of all that? You know, with this touch and taste and all this, and then we've got this vessel in our in our chest that that pumps blood and life into us and oxygen and and uh, and it's also this thing that we feel with, and it kind of tells us, you know. Um, you know, it's some sort of meter, you know, but it's not connected. It's like, you know, our eyes can, can fail our hearts, you know, our ears can fail our hearts and our, and, and betray what we actually are feeling. Um, and, and, and so this heart and this thing that, that I think that St. Exuberi is talking about as well is, is like, what is in our hearts? What is in our hearts when we're actually trying to achieve peace or, or trying to achieve this, sort of piece of music or, or, or just build something or, or be a leader. What, what is in your heart when you, you know, so I think that question, especially now, Mm -hmm. I mean, especially now, I mean, in every generation, every time there is an especially now, but I think right now for us, you know, as we're seeing the shifts of, of thought and, you know, and, and, and how we've actually society has grown to be able to identify uh, some of our problems a little more specifically that how are we actually moving with them with our hearts? Like how are we approaching these issues and, and each other? Um, And, and I think that that is, that is a critical thing that I think, you know, we can spend more time doing. Well, you, you you mentioned earlier, you talked about sort of the, the phrase I wrote down was the, 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 the timeless and the personal, and that comes out in the film as well. And sort of mm-hmm. you know, the phrase I wrote down was the personal to the universal. You know, we've got yeah. you know, this. This is we're we're all in this together, and yet so difficult to see. I mean, you don't have to read too deeply on CBC or BBC or CNN or Al Jazeera mm-hmm. to realize this is a pretty dysfunctional, disconnected world we're living in right now. Yeah. Um, and yeah. a lot, lot of lessons we could learn not only from your film but from the Little Prince itself. What, Absolutely. What, 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 and how, yeah. and what is it about these disasters or these atrocities, like even the aviator, like having this crash in the desert or like World War Two, World War One, these, you know, uh, you know, a crazy sort of president rearing its head out of the United States of America. What does it take all these like, you know, a fire happening in Fort McMurray for us to actually get together mm-hmm. and be on mm-hmm. the same side? How, do, how, how like what's it going to take to shock us out of our our status quo like thinking that the, the, the complacency that we seem to so, so many of us seem to find ourselves in. Yeah. And it was it's so difficult to like find reconciliation. We mm. use this word, especially in this country so much. And it's like, it's true. you know, we, we need a crisis, you know, we need to, we need in order to find reconciliation with us, we need to identify It's It's just, what is the, what does it take such like, you know, like hurt and pain and, 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 and then centuries after to, to kind of acknowledge it and, you know, to find, Oh, to address that. Oh, and you know, we need to be peaceful. <laughs> like, right, right. We need to, we need to do this or, or like treat each other like that. Or it's, 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 it's kind of a, a fascinating way that we roll and, and, you know, I think it's degree in the coming out of, you know, this book being, you know, written at a time of war. Was is an, is a, was a fascinating aspect for myself that I also wasn't really, mm. you know, um, so aware of. And then you start to like, you know, do you know, do more homework and go deeper, and you're like, wow, a 
person who was actually feeling so much because of the state of the world and was able to kind of talk about it in this sort of way, in this little story. And um, I find that you, know, that you can, that you, a person can actually, I don't know, I think there's also that, the, the idea that sometimes, you know, well, the creator is just a vessel for something to channel through them. And, and um, but for it to even happen or to be in a space to do that, I, I, I think it's, it's pretty remarkable we take for granted it was like war was going on he was exiled he wasn't at home he was you know in this sort of place of loneliness and and um and produced this piece of work that is with us now ironic, 75 and, years after and, and as you point out in the film kind of ironic in a way that he writes it in the u.s um, mm -hmm. um and but but some would probably argue he'd been writing it in france for many many years before and then just put, right. then just put pen to paper, right? I mean, you know, this, right. there's some pretty interesting. What did the story really begin yeah, it, right, being written? That's right. right. Yeah. Really, yeah. from yeah. an author. Yeah. Some, yeah, just the authorial intention, and, and and when does that actually take place? And so on. Some fascinating stuff about his life that comes out, and um, and so sort of tragic too. How he ultimately, or at least how historians think he actually dies during wartime, mm. but but on a reconnaissance mission without any weapons. Um, oh, and you need to talk to me about this a little bit too. What a crazy nut this guy was. He, 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 <laughs> he, he read while he was flying. He took notes <laughs> while he was flying. So I wonder, I wonder how, how, um, how we would have handled, uh, uh, you know, in a, a galaxy S nine, you know, uh, driving down, <laughs> driving down the road. Would he have been taking notes while he was driving? I mean, what? Oh my goodness, man. He would have loved like, I guess these, uh, self-driving vehicles at some point, <laughs> you know, so. It's, uh, so he can actually enjoy the sort of being up there in the stars and the clouds and the sky, the romanticism and do your work. That's right. Yeah. yeah. What a, what a what a beautiful spot to write. I'm 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 up it's here great. all alone. Oh yeah, right. I have to fly the plane too. Yeah. I have to fly the plane too. <laughs> I mean, it's it's amazing like the stories around uh and this I mean it's like just flying one of those contraptions at that time was just mm. insane. Mm. You know, yet alone okay, like if there was any sort of inclination of being distracted at any moment. I mean, he did suffer some some pretty violent um crashes that yes. he was lucky to survive um which was amazing again something that i did not know about this 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 human being this man taking planes up and, and crashing in the debt and i mean i mean all these sort of things are like okay it feeds into the you know the little prince and the aviator crashed into the desert and you actually never actually see this aviator and and it's this off-camera sort of relationship and um and these are from his own experience. Right, right. You know? Yeah. He survived right about it and tell us about them, um, which is pretty amazing. Uh, I definitely, you know, don't think that I would have been wanting to go up into contraptions like that in the, in the, in the forties for sure. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think I would have wanted to go, uh, go up in a plane with him. I don't think. I, uh, no, no, I mean, no. Yeah. It's, yeah. if you want to, Hey, right. Exupri, if you want to write, get in the back seat. I'll fly this thing, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. It's just, you can write. I'll fly you around. Well, I love. Know I love the. Ready. I love the 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 ultimately the the tragedy of that. But I love the the contradiction almost of that. That he's up in this mm -hmm. pretty new, uh, pretty new, amazing piece of technology. And I think you bring out in the film that they're kind of made out of rubber, so they crash actually pretty well. Um, and, right. And, you know, right. And people, and people can kind of walk away from them to some degree, but ultimately he he isn't able to do this. Somebody in the film said Charles that. That, that the book is is really about how uh, we manage the death of the people we love. Um, oh, yes. It, it, His great nephew, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yes. beautiful that you were able to get to, to, to some of his family as well because we, we start to get a sense for maybe maybe really who this man was on, on some Absolutely. level. Absolutely. I mean, this is a deeply layered uh, story. Um, I mean, happy for you to, I'd love for you to comment on that, that, that notion of, is this book really about dealing with people we love that, that have, that have moved yeah. on? Um, it's, it's deeply profound and existential on so many levels. I love that aspect of it. And it was, you know, Olivier Duguay, uh, who is his great nephew, who's in the film and then Francois, 
um, who's his actual nephew, mm-hmm. um, uh, Saint Exupery's nephew, and he's actually, you know, there's photos of him, and he actually spent time with him and would watch him draw, and um, like, yeah, I, we were very lucky to have their family, um, their blessing, and and have them participate in the film. But yeah, and we, that line specifically, you know, um, just recently, uh, another uh, loved one, really close person passed away on uh, this new year. Mm. And I was just in New York uh, a couple of weeks ago for a memorial funeral. And and it's funny, it's just like, just and then just a week before that, we were in New York uh, having our premiere of the Little Prince, the film. Um, and uh, Olivier was in town with us in New York, and he's saying this line, and I'm, I'm, I already have this news, and, and I'm remembering all this stuff. And it actually was helping me, you know, just r- remembering this. Right. Little, just this little line. But, it, but I think essentially, yeah, that is, that is what it is. It's, it's, that's why I feel like it's, it's this sort of idea of returning to, that death mm. is also this return to, to this sort of, you know, imagination and, and childlike sort of place and, and, and that it, is, but it also, you know, it's painful and it's, it's something you have to deal with. It's this, this sort of fact of life, but it's, it's like, you know, the idea that this echo and you're always up in the stars and you're always with somebody and, and, um, well, I think- and 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 I and I think it's fascinating that you know if I just drew it back to like you know my first you know feature film I made Nurse Rider Boy I, the the tagline is the people you love never go away right and 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 I didn't even realize that I was channeling some aspects of the little prince <laughs> nice. in that project yes. ten years ago that again I was kind of speaking about the same thing and, well isn't and, that uh, isn't that such a beautiful uh, uh, shout out, and that, that's not even a, a, a beautiful way to honor um, artists everywhere, right? That, right? That's something right. that you read many years ago, you see many years later, you connect that dot, you see the thread and say, I didn't even realize that I was echoing, you know, some of that. And, 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 and it's yeah. still, I just, I, I, for me, that's an argument for, for why we need to see a great film, why we need to read poetry and why we need to listen to poetry being read and why we need to yeah. read books like the little prince. I mean, I just, it's a beautiful, I agree. beautiful validation. Um, you know, the film for me is just such a stark reminder of, 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 of how difficult relationships can be, how, how meaningful mm. at, at the same time, how meaningful relationships can be with others. And I don't mean just to reference the, the, the relationship he had with his, with his, with his wife, with his partner. It sounded very complicated on a whole lot yeah. of levels, but, but there's something there as well. And I think where I'm going with this and, and dive in here, wherever you want, Charles, but yes, what, so you're, you're approaching this as the, the director, you're the filmmaker, you're the writer, you're the guy getting it all done, bringing people to, you know, making sure it happens. You've got a vision for it. You're very sort of, I guess, technically involved. Where do you, mm-hmm. you know, where do you relationally come out in this film? Um, obviously, it's edit- mm. editorial decisions and all those kinds of things. I get all of right. that. But, um, uh, yeah. Uh, do you hear what I'm asking? Oh, Is absolutely. It, yeah. And I think that that's a tricky thing. Um, right to do because especially what I don't like to put inject myself into them physically per se, but I do feel like there are things that I'm listening to or hearing or shaping, or I think that are in my body that I want to share or Mm. project in the world. So I think in terms of like, you know, making these choices that are may, you know, are technically, you know, they're technical sort of uh, decisions that are being made, but they're being motivated by, by a sensibility or a thought or something sure. that I'm trying to uncover myself. I think that this sort of film, you know, even the project that presented itself to me specifically for a moment of my life where I was, you know, reassessing what, how I, my, I, I function in my relationships and, and this idea of taming, which isn't like, you know, it's, it's, it's also the North American, you know, uh, translation of the word that, out of a French sort of expression, but it's, but it's like, how do we build, how do I personally, you know, um, treat, build, um, nurture, take care of my relationships, especially be, you know, making films and being in a certain business that is so demanding of your time. Like, what am I doing? 
And, and I think this film in itself for me, in my personal growth, came into my life and lined up because there were things that I needed to learn about, mm. that I needed to know. And going through the process of making this film, I learned more about what, you know, what takes, what it takes. And, and this, these sort of ideas that, you know, things aren't always going to be smooth that you already are aware of, but like, you know, it's, but the, but they, they're not just hiccups. Sometimes they're real challenging things that happen between people that you love and care about. And how do you find your way through it? Do you just take up, pick up and leave, or do you stay in it and, and, and try to understand? And, and maybe you do have to go away for a little while to actually reconnect with yourself and what you think and, and then come back to the person, but there's a coming back. You know, you're not believing it. And and that is a challenge, I think, you know, for a lot of men, for I think for people, whatever, but I think commonly, you know, culturally for myself, my experience is that a lot of men leave and the single mother sort of uh, scenario and, and, and what does that mean? And what are we looking for? So mm. reflecting back, isn't it like, what am I looking for out there? You know, a room full of roses, or do I want my one rose? Like, right, like right, there's so right. many things that I think that are so fantastic as you know, as lessons for young men to actually connect with out of this story early on. You know, um, being able to identify why you know in a room full of roses that all look the same, why you the one you pick is so special. Right. Yeah. Like. You know, like these sort of things, and and then respecting that and honoring that. And remember, you made a, a choice. You made a choice. Well, yeah, I, exactly. Well, I mean, I, if somebody said to me, "What's what's the book about? What's the what's the film? What's your film about it?" Invisible Essence. I I would have a tough time landing, but I think the word choice would <laughs> have to make it into the sentence. It would be a very long and run-on sentence because I'd like to capture everything. Right. But, yeah, but it's existential sort of answer. But well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but this, this is about choice. This is about stepping into a very uh, tragically beautiful, scary future, it seems to me. Yes. Right? Yeah. And the choices we make and then things will lead to these sort of results or, that, you know, and, and, and it's still a choice. Like, you know, when you lose someone that you really love and of, of how you're going to grieve and mm. how you're going to you know, move forward or not, or, or what, like these sort of things, like we're, you know, I remember that on my script, it was, became a sort of thing where I'm like, you know, I'd write things down as I'm going around and talking to individuals and stuff and taking notes and, and we're like, just like writing the word choice, like right on the front of it. And, and it was, uh, it's, it's acknowledging that as well from a, a creative point of view, from actually looking at the story, interpreting it and, it's like there are all these choices that are being made, and sometimes you can't explain exactly, mm -hmm. but it is a choice is nonetheless it's still a choice, you know. Um, uh, yeah, so it's uh, so many layers. So, many, so many, layers. many layers, and sadly, as I suspected, uh, we are almost going to have to uh, end. Yeah. We're going to have to end our interview. Come, we both have other things to do, I'm sure, today, but but <laughs> but yeah. perhaps we can do a part two. Uh, and I wanted to ask you one more question before I, I read just yes, a little absolutely. port, a little piece out of the book. And real quick uh, shout out: so March the eighth, uh, opening at uh, Hot Dogs Ted Rogers Cinema here in Toronto. Um, you're going to be going across the country. Also, a one-hour-long uh, version of it is available on the Documentary Channel, uh, which is a um, that's correct, and that you can get to that through the CBC website, correct? That's right. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. correct. Fan fantastic. And I'll, I'll I'll give people a little more uh, info about that on, on the site. You can find that there too, folks. The the links will be there. So here, answer me this. Do you think that if if you contemplate a sunset, is is that the way to find your freedom? Mm. Comes comes out comes Great out in the question. book. Comes out in the film. Great question. Yeah. yeah, you don't even have to answer it, Charles. I just, oh, I just, wow. I just had to, I just had to ask, ask it because. I think I think, I think it's a kind of... great question, and I think it's something that people, I've you know, you just asked me, but everyone who's listening, that question goes to everyone and mm. internalize that answer for yourself. I think that's great. That's it's, quietly answer that question quiet, for yourself. I there think you it's go. Great. There you go. Quietly answer mm. that question for yourself. So here we go. Just near the end of the book, quote: 
People where you live, the little prince said, grow 5,000 roses in one garden, yet they don't find what they're looking for. They don't find it, I answered. Mm -hmm. And yet what they're looking for could be found in a single rose or a little water. Of course, I answered. And the little prince added, but eyes are blind. You have to look with the heart. It's just such a beautiful... I mean, there's just you can you can open up the book anywhere and find something like that. But I just thought it would would be a really lovely way to kind of bring our conversation to a close. Um, oh, fantastic! And, and um, thank thank you for your time today. And uh, uh, I just what a what a pleasure getting to meet meet you. And and I'm looking forward. I'm 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 gonna get try to get down to the opening. Actually, hopefully we'll be able to say hello fantastic. face to face. But thanks for your time today. We've been talking to. Charles Officer about about his new film Invisible Essence. We've been talking about the Little Prince and modern existentialism and fear and fascination <laughs> and choice. Oh man, Charles, what a what thank a, you so yeah, much. Yeah, what a it pleasure. It was such a great conversation. Thank you. It was really great speaking with you.